Hello and welcome to another LAMP Bible Study. My name is James, your host and Bible reader for LAMP Bible Study. And so, uh, let's see here. We are starting off, or restarting in the book of Chronicles. Um, I'm picking up in chapter 16 and 1 Chronicles chapter 16. I'm currently reading from an NIV Collegiate Bible. And um, I hope everything's been going well with you. And if not, welcome to another LAMP Bible Study. <laughs> And so um, there, for me, there's just been a lot going on. And in fact, this recording I've had to do multiple times because of technical difficulties. So I hope and pray that this uh, recording actually stays and sticks. So let's get started with the, in, in the Holy Word. And I pray that we continue to seek the Lord's wisdom together in His Holy Word. So let's get started today. They brought the ark of God and set it inside the tent that David had pitched for it, and they presented burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before God. After David had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Then he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins to each Israelite man and woman. And so just a brief um, reminder of where we're at technically is that... Um, David is bringing the Ark of the Lord, the Ark of the Covenant, into the city of uh, David, Jerusalem. And so uh, there's just a big celebration. Everyone is feeling the blessing. You know, everything's being fulfilled. Um, and so everyone is in a just a triumphant. They are just blessed. They are worshiping the Lord. And they are extremely excited and extremely um just a happy everything's been going very well and david is uh, has been anointed king he is their leader and david really 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 loves the lord he really uh worships the lord and follows the commands and so everything's just uh the blessings are just overflowing and the people are really feeling it and so um there's just a mass amount of celebration going on and so that's where we're currently at. Um, and uh, bringing past to present, um, when things are going well for us, when uh, there's time for celebration of uh, for us, uh, as I said before in previous Bible studies, um, do we think about the Lord? Do we give praise and honor and glory back to the Lord um, during those times of blessings and those times where we are, everything's just going fantastic for us. Think about those things in our lives. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. He appointed some of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord, to make petition, to give thanks, and to praise the Lord, the God of Israel. Asaph was the chief, Zechariah second, then uh, Jael, Shemiramoth, uh, Jahil, Mattathiah, Eliab, Benaiah, Obedidom, and Jeel, they were to play the lyres and harps. Asaph was to sound the cymbals, and Benaiah and Jehaziel, the priests, were to blow the trumpets regularly before the Ark of the Covenant of God. So um, we'll get to uh, the Asaph is the the head musician, the head um, person over the music, and so uh, his name will come up a lot in Psalms too because David. Uh, creates a lot of wonderful, beautiful songs and psalms in, um, in the book of Psalms. And so, um, and he has, gives them to Asaph um, to put them to music. And it's just wonderful and beautiful. And we'll get to see more of that when we get to the book of Psalms. And so, um, bringing past to present, uh, musicians, you know, people who can play instruments. Can you play an instrument? Um, I, um, that's one of those things that uh, could be a blessing, uh, from the Lord. That is a blessing from the Lord to learn how to play an instrument, um, to be natural at it or talented at it, um, or to be skillful and learn and how to play, um, the different instruments. Do you know people who, uh, play instruments and, um, think about those things. And also, you know, um, when you are playing the instrument, uh, think of, of being thankful to the Lord, right? Things, things to think about. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel? And what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. David's Psalm of Thanks. He just, David is just 
really, really good at expressing love and the, with his, all the strength to the Lord, all the strength, all of his body, all of his mind, all of his soul, all of his heart back to the Lord. And again, we'll see more uh, of it in the book of Psalms. Um, but throughout here, um, there's little bits and pieces. So um, let's continue to read. That day, David first committed to Asaph and his associates this psalm of thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. I'm going to read this again because this is just beautiful. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. That is something that uh, we can look at and look to and um, be strengthened. Be strengthened um, be strengthened in our walk, be strengthened in our faith, be encouraged. Um, it brings hope. And um, these are the these words are just beautiful and they um, bring in past to present. Um, you can just look upon these words and and feel what how David was humbled, humbled and grateful for everything that was happening and how he wanted to just in words um, speak to the Lord and give thanks. And so there's a lot here. Um, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. O descendants of Israel, his servant, O sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. The word he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac, he confirmed it to Jacob as a decree, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. To you I will give the land of Canaan as the portion you will inherit. When they were put few in number, or when they were but few in number, few indeed, and strangers in it. They wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another. He allowed no man to oppress them. For their sake, he rebuked kings. Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him, strength and joy in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him, all the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the sea resound in all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant in everything in them. Then the trees of the forest will sing. <laughs> then the <a> tree... <laughs> <laughs> then the trees of the forest will sing. They will sing for joy before the Lord. He, for he comes to judge the earth. Now, um, uh, I was thinking of before just the beauty of everything. And have you ever, you know, taking this past to present, have you ever went out? Have you ever looked around? Have you ever looked at or listened also to the wind and how it blows through the trees and how the sound of the leaves and the, or the sound of a creek or a river or the ocean and the waves the sky the stars the sun 
the clouds? Have you ever just looked around and just see the beauty, the beauty that is, that the Lord has created? I mean, the sky, just think, thinking of one thing, even the sky and just the gorgeous colors that you can see during the different parts of the day. The gorgeousness of nature, just landscape and the surrounding, um, the different hues, the different colors of sand or rock or vegetation, the different colors of green and blue and all of it. It's all marvelous and all wonderful. And we get, to, and the Lord created it in seven days. And we get to live in, in it. We get to le look and see and feel and touch. And those are things that I, I that come to mind when I read this. Um, the glory of the Lord and what he created. And he created us in his own, in his own image. And how beautiful each and every one of us are. And how diverse each and every one of us are. It's just completely amazing to think about it and be in awe. And so those are things that I think about when I read over this ver these verses. And how it, it really speaks to me. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we go over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. I want to read this again. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. He is the good shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd. He, he wants only the best for us. He always is looking out for us. He always wants to be with us. He, wants, he is uh, the living God. Another thing that comes to mind is timelessness. The Lord is time is timeless. We even though we here on earth we live by time, right? But the Lord is timeless. And this thing that I'm talking about, it's going to come up again in in a, in a little bit. Um, but that's another thing um, that comes to my mind. And giving thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love endures forever because it truly does. It, it endures for all eternity. And there's, there's a part in here that we're going to read today that's going to describe some of his love for us. Some more of his love for us in eternity. <laughs> what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Cry out, save us, O God, our Savior. Gather us and deliver us from the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name that we may glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Then all the people said amen and praised the Lord. David left Asaph and his associates before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to minister there regularly according to each day's requirements. He also left Obed-Edom and his 68 associates to minister with them. Obed-Edom, son of Jud Judithun, and also Hasa were gatekeepers. David left Zodok, or Zadok, the priest, and his fellow priests before the tabernacle of the Lord at the high place in Gibeon to present burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar of burnt offering regularly, morning and evening, in accordance with everything written in the law of the Lord, which he had given Israel. With them were Heman and Judathan, and the rest of those chosen and designated by name to give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Heman and Judathan were responsible for the sounding of the trumpets and cymbals, and for the playing of the other instruments for sacred song. The sons of Judathan were stationed at the gate. Then all the people left, each for his own home, and David returned home to bless his family. So it's just mass celebration, uh, mass worship and praise of the Lord. And David just really, really feeling in, li in line in tune with the Lord and in his, in, in his walk with the Lord. And that uh, shows us too, it gives us an example of how 
we we are blessed how we are strengthened when we have a, a, a close walk with the Lord when we involve the Lord in our in our day to day in our lives period think about those things in our lives um, by bringing past to present and this is during the, this is during the Old Testament this is under the law um, but we can still grab things from it that relate to our life as in a close walk to, with the Lord as in giving praise back to the Lord think about those things in our life um, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this how does it make you feel and what does it make you think let's continue to read God's promise to David after David was settled in his, in his palace, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a palace of cedar, while the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord is under a tent. Nathan replied to David, Whatever you have in mind, do it, for God is with you. That night the word of God came to Nathan, saying, This is beautiful, just take note, all of it. Go and tell my servant David, This is what the Lord says, You are not the one to build me a house to dwell in. I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought Israel up out of Egypt to this day. I have moved from one tent site to another, from one dwelling place to another. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their leaders whom I commanded to shepherd my people, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, um, whom I commanded to shepherd my people, that just brings to mind the good shepherd, which is Jesus who's in the line of David, right? And then also David was a shepherd, sheep, sheep herder, you know? He was a, he he watched sheep and now he is leading the Lord's people as a shepherd of the flock. Think about those things and our Lord is the good shepherd. Think about those things. Um and bringing past to present when we have difficulties, when we have issues, whether it be health, whether it be economy, whether it be uh, work related, whatever it may have may be, it's the best thing to bring the Lord to to give it to the Lord to ask the Lord to listen because the Lord is there. He's there. He's just waiting for us to to reach out to Him and. He's already accomplished whatever needs to be accomplished for us. Think about those things. I mean, he's already, the Lord's already defeated sin for us by sending his son to die for our sins. Everything has been completed and he's just waiting for us to acknowledge, waiting for us to love him back, you know, think about those things because he's timeless, but you know, he, he knows that, um, we are subject to time and he's just waiting for us to listen out. <laughs> um, so that's, those are things that come through my mind, just reading even this portion right here about the good shepherd and how he guides us and teaches us. And he gives us a whole book of wisdom, a whole book of wisdom for us to learn and grow and understand and have a closer walk with him. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we go over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture and from following the flock to be ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name like the names of the greatest men of the earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore, as they did at the beginning, and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also subdue all your enemies. I declare to you that the Lord will build a house for you when your days are over and you go to be with your fathers. Okay, so this is another extremely important take note. This is what I was mentioning earlier about just how the Lord's timeless and the Lord already works for us and uh, provides for us and 
mentioned in previous Bible studies, I heard time and time again, I just recently heard it, you know, oh, you know, the Lord was, the Lord was at work, he was in the background, and, and I'm always, when I hear that, I'm like, the Lord's always in the foreground, we just can't see it, <laughs> you know, we just, we just don't know what's going on, so he's not, he's never in the background, when we think about it, do we put the Lord in the back, or do we, or is the Lord in front, right? Think about those things. And it's it's just a way of speech. But the speech, sometimes we have to correct our own speech too. I hear people all the time utilizing, um, like I mentioned previous Bible studies way back again about uh, idols. Oh, that person, he, they are my idol. And I'm just like, okay, the definition of idol is you're worshiping them. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, similar to the word icon. So we have to be careful and we have to understand that words have an impact. Words have a meaning. And so when it comes to um, this as well, um, when it comes to this, we have to understand that words have a meaning and we have to learn from what we say and we have to understand and watch what we say as well. And we also need to understand that the Lord has already been at work for us. The Lord, listen to this. I declare to you that the Lord will build a house for you. And so the Lord provides everything. All we have to do is ask. All we have to do is have a close walk with him. And it may not be exactly what we want. It's what the Lord knows we, what we need what he's going to provide for us, because that's what's best. That's what's perfect. And so much so that he's um, building a house for us. And this is one, another subject brings up another subject. He's building a house for us, for those who do believe, who believe that his, he sent his son to die for our sins and, and, and um, to be saved. Um, so all we have to do is believe that, uh, believe in Jesus and to believe in Jesus and that's all, right? Um, and that is something that we'll get more into, especially in the New Testament. Um, but that's those are things to think about and how um, and why I say um, because everybody has a choice. Everybody does, he he he's not forcing everybody to believe him to uh, believe his son to to read even his word, to look upon him as the living God. He loves each and every one of us because he He made each and every one of us in his own image. But he's not here to, for he wants to have a relationship. And we, us who do believe, are here to show also that love and to love each other as ourselves and, and proclaim the holiness, the holy, uh, the, his holy name, and spread the gospel. When, um, um, when, when, uh, when we are um, following the, the the word, when when it's time for us to, when the Lord's asking us to um, uh, per, uh, participate and spread the gospel, right? So. I just want to read this one and again. I declare to you that the Lord will build a house for you. The Lord, everything, whether it's, um, we can look at this as encouragement, as hope, as just everything, because the Lord is building a house for us for eternity, to be with him for eternity. He also is there for us whenever we need him. He, help, he, can, he will help us out. And all we have to do is have have faith. And we can even ask the Lord to strengthen our faith. There's a lot here. There's sermons upon sermons. <laughs> Let's continue to read. Um, I will, or uh, when, uh, when your days are over and you go to be with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, one of your own sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for me, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. I will never take my love away from him, as I took it away from your predecessor. I will set him over my house and my kingdom forever. His throne will be established forever. Nathan reported to David all the words of this entire revelation. 
and this is it's a revelation and it has came and it has already come true and that's with his son um with uh david's descendant jesus our savior and so jesus will sit will sit on the throne is sitting on the throne forever for eternity and so this has been fulfilled this is a fulfilled prophecy <laughs> and ooh, just oh just it's, it's the truth it's 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 what's real and <clears throat> And also, he also talks about his predecessor, which was Saul. Saul, you know, Saul um, was um, a very a, a taller person, a person who had commanding presence, um, uh, and he was he when he was told that he was going to rule Israel, he, he um, you know, had a human reaction. He, you know, just because people are tall, are tall um, doesn't mean that they uh, may, be, uh, may not be timid or may not uh, have same reactions as everybody else. And that's what happened to him, uh, Saul. He was like, whoa, you know, I'm going to lead. And then when it came time, he went into hiding <laughs> you know, when they announced his name. And Saul's going to be the king. And, and he was in hiding and they brought him out and they anointed him and he was like, or, you know, I believe he was, uh, they made him king basically. And just, um, but he, and he, he did, he did love the Lord. He just didn't follow everything that the Lord requested him to do. He wanted to do what he wanted to do, you know? And so, um, yes, he was anointed. Yes, he did a lot of good things and had, a, um, and walked with the Lord, but he also did what he wanted to do. And so the, and did a lot of things that the Lord did not want him to do. So the Lord told him, okay, I'm going to take the kingdom away from you. And that's what he did. He gave it to David, he gives it to David. And um, David is, uh, ends up becoming um, king over Israel. And in the line of David is Jesus. And so um, this prophecy, this has been fulfilled. This has been fulfilled. <clears throat> and just think about how David feels. And we'll get to that in just a moment. But just even reading over this and past to present and how the Lord is declaring to us that he's our, he's our provider. He's, he just reach out to him, Pray, you know, have a prayer to him. Um, listen, cause we do have a living God. <laughs> you know, he's, he is alive. And so, um, and and be and humble ourselves humble ourselves and pray and and seek the lord with all our strength with all our heart with all our soul with all our body and just um and and allow the holy spirit just to fill and give give us peace and give us healing give us and give us love you know it's there's a lot here um Reading over this, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read David's prayer. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and he said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my family that you have brought me this far? And as if this were not enough in your sight, O God, you have spoken about the future of the house of your servant. You have looked on me as though I were the most exalted of men, O Lord God. Just think, like, David is just in awe. He's in awe, and he's like, the Lord has declared all this. And listen to what he's going to say, too, because this also helps us, too. Um, let's continue to read. What more can David say to you for honoring your servant? For you know your servant, O Lord. For the sake of your servant and according to your will, you have done this great thing and made known all these great promises. There is no one like you, O Lord, and there is no God but you, as we have heard with our own ears. And who is like your people Israel, the one nation on earth whose God went out to redeem a people for himself and to make a name for yourself and to perform great and awesome wonders by driving out nations from before your people, whom you redeemed from Egypt, you made your people Israel your very own forever. And you, O oh Lord, have 
become their God. And now, Lord, take, take uh, note of this too. And now, Lord, let the promises or let the promise you have made concerning your servant and his house be established forever. Do as you promised, so that it will be established and that your name will be great forever. Then men will say, the Lord Almighty, the God over Israel is Israel's God. And the house of your servant David will be established before you. And so right here, right here, David is saying, let, let your will be done. Let what you have said be done. And that is something, bringing past to present, that is something we can do as well. When Lord speaks, when the Lord um, tells us or Lord provides that blessing to us or those blessings to us, bless them, bless them back and say, thank you. Let your will be done. Let what you were promised be done. Amen. Because the Lord is there for us, each and every one of us. Um, let's continue to read. You, my God, have revealed to your servant that you will build a house for him. So your servant has found courage to pray to you. O Lord, you are God. You have promised these good things to your servant. Now you have been pleased to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue forever in your sight. For you, O Lord, have blessed it and it will be blessed forever. Amen. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Think about that. Um, in our lives, past or present. Um, think about that. Um, just, I know that times can get tough. You know, times can be hard, whether it's health, whether it's struggles, whatever struggles those may be. Um, but there is hope. There's hope here. And there's love and there's comfort and there's our Lord, Lord and Savior Jesus, just waiting to hear from us. <laughs> and when we do, when we do reach out to him, have you, have you, um, this is a question for you. Uh, have you experienced it? Have you experienced that blessing? I'm a witness. <laughs> Whether it be healing, uh, I had a, I had somebody that I know that, um, was um, given an illness, a terminal illness, <clears throat> and the Lord turned it around. And I am forever grateful. So there's a lot here. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel? And what does it make you think? Let's continue to read David's victories. In course of time, David defeated the Philistines and subdued them, and he took Gath and its surrounding villages from the control of the Philistines. David also defeated the Moabites, and they became subject to him and brought tribute. Moreover, David fought Hadadezer, king of Zobah, as far as Hamath, when he went to establish his control along the Euphrates River. David captured a thousand of his chariots, seven thousand charioteers, and twenty thousand foot soldiers. He hamstrung all but a hundred of the chariot horses. Um, and again, this is the Old Testament, <laughs> as a reminder, um, that I forgot to say at the beginning, but um, when it comes to these words, um, these names, I mean, these names, um, if you know the correct pronunciation, read, the, read, um, read them along with us. If you know how to type them out, um, please do place them in the comments, and I thank you. Let's continue to read. When the Armians of Damascus came to help Hedadezer, king of Zobah, David struck down 20,000 of them. He put garrisons in the Armian kingdom of Damascus, and the Armians became subject to him and brought tribute. The Lord gave David victory everywhere he went. Because <clears throat> the Lord was, because the, because David was keeping the Lord's law and his commandments. Let's continue to read. David took the gold shields carried by the officers of Hedadezer and brought them to Jerusalem. From Teba and Kun, towns that belonged to Hedadezer, David took a great quantity of bronze, which Solomon used to make the bronze sea, the pillars, and various bronze articles. So it does that. It does a little jump. <laughs> Solomon remembers a David and Bathsheba's son, and, it, and Solomon um, is... The next ruler after David and Solomon builds the temple and Solomon used 
uh, what uh, David had got, you know, all this bronze to build uh, these items. So think about that. Let's continue to read. When Tal king of Hamath heard that David had defeated the entire army of Hedidus or king of Zobah, he sent his son Hedoram the king, to King David to greet him and congratulate him on his victory in battle over Hedadazar, who had been at war with Tal. Hadaram brought all kinds of articles of gold and silver and bronze. King David dedicated these articles to the Lord, as he had done with the silver and gold he had taken from all these nations, Edom and Moab, the Ammonites and the Philistines and Amalek. Abishai, son of Zerai, struck down 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. He put garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became subject to David. The Lord gave David victory everywhere he went. Um, and so, again, um, this King Tao, he was happy because he was being attacked uh, by this King Hedadezar, but um, Hedadezar went and, uh, up to attack Israel, and King David and Israel routed them. <clears throat> and so, uh, the, when Tao heard it, he was like, all right, <laughs> well, let me send him, you know, tribute. Let me send him thanks. And that's what he did. And so bring him past to present. Think about it in our lives. <clears throat> when things start going good for us and um, our blessings help other people, right? Um, have you, Has it been an instance for you where people wanted to thank you, wanted to congratulate you? Uh, for the work you did or for the help that you provided. Think about those things in our life. Um, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel? What does it make you think? Let's continue to read. David's officials. David uh, reigned over all Israel doing what was just and right for all his people. Joab, son of Zerai, was over the army. Jehoshaphat, son of Ehel Eh. Elihu, or Ehilud, was recorder. Zadok, son of Ahitub, and Ahimelech, son of Abiathar, were priests. Shafsha, or Shafsha, was secretary. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, was over the Kurathites and Pelathites, and David's sons were chief officials at the king's side. Um, so this is a Reminder, we can bring it past or present about counsel, like people that we associate with, um, which will come back up here in just uh, uh, shortly during this Bible study about uh, re, uh, about when we seek counsel. So we seek counsel from the Lord, but sometimes we just, and sometimes um, we may receive counsel from others, right? And... Um, Think about that because, and take note because we're going to get ready to talk about that. Um, but think about people in your family, whether uh, your family, your peers, your coworkers, uh, your friends. Uh, think about those things and uh, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind about importance of, um, of those uh, thoughts and those things that come to you. Um, offerings of wisdom and such. Uh, how does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. The battle against the Ammonites. In the course of time, Nahash king of the Ammonites died and his son succeeded him as king. David thought, I will show kindness to Hanun, son of Nahash, because his father showed kindness to me. So David sent a delegation to express his sympathy to Hanun concerning his father. When David's men came to Hanan in the land of the Ammonites to express sympathy to him, the Ammonite nobles said to Hanan, Do you think David is honoring your father by sending men to you to express sympathy? Haven't his men come to you to explore and spy out the country and overthrow it? So Hanan seized David's men, shaved them, cut off their garments in the middle at the buttocks, and sent them away. So... <clears throat> Back to what I was mentioning about counsel, bringing past to present. And Hanan's going to see that this was horrible advice, terrible advice. <clears throat> uh, for none of these people went to the Lord. It was not from the Lord. Oh, well, 
it was known that this was going to happen. And so the Lord's going to allow this to happen for him to get pad counsel. So, so what's going to happen next to happen? So, <clears throat> but think about that in our lives. When we, um, um, when we go through circumstances and things that we can't control, the best and first thing to do is go straight to the Lord. Um, and the Lord also, um, and listen, the Lord also will send us signs. He will send us confirmation. It could be through other people. Other people could uh, come up to you and say something to you and you're like, wow, that's exactly what I was thinking. It may happen more than once. <laughs> so think about those things. And that's what I was meaning about counsel. And, and be wary of counsel too. You know, you may receive information. I would take it to the Lord. And um, because you don't want to take that bad information because bad things can happen, definitely. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. When someone came and told David about the men, he sent messengers to meet them, for they were greatly humiliated. The king said, stay at Jericho till your beards have grown and then come back. When the Ammonites realized that they had become a stench in David's nostrils, Hunan and the Ammonites sent a thousand talents of silver to hire chariots and charioteers from Aram, uh, Naharim, Aram, Makkah, and Zobah. They hired 32,000 chariots and charioteers, as well as the king of Makkah with his troops, who came and camped near Medaba, while the Ammonites were mustered from their towns and moved out for battle. On hearing this, David sent Joab out with the entire army of fighting men. The Ammonites came out and drew up in battle formation at the entrance to their city, while the kings uh, who had come were by themselves in the open country. Joab saw that there were battle lines in front of him and behind him, so he selected some of the best troops in Israel and deployed them against the Ar Armians. He put the rest of the men under the command of Abishai, his brother, and they were deployed against the Ammonites. Take note of this, <clears throat> and, um, of what's going on, because he's going up against, uh, against horrible odds, you know, uh, uh, stuff that's just uh, stuff that can be related in our lives, going up against the impossible, going to get up against the walls and mountains and such, and 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 horrible circumstance. So um, let's uh, take note of that and let's continue to read. <clears throat> he put the rest of the men under the command of Abishai, his brother, and they were deployed against the Ammonites. Job said, if the Armians are too strong for me, then you are to rescue me. But if the Arm Ammonites are too strong for you, then I will rescue you. Be strong and let us fight bravely for our people and the cities of our God. The Lord will do what is good in his sight. So think about that in our lives. Um, giving those things to the Lord, because the Lord's there to fight our battles. He already has the victory, so allow it to happen. <laughs> Think about that. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. <clears throat> then Joab and the troops with him advanced to fight the Armians, and they fled before him. When the Ar Ammonites saw that the Armians uh, were fleeing, they too fled before his brother Abishai and went inside the city. So Joab went back to Jerusalem. After the Arameans saw that they had been routed by Israel, they sent messengers and had Arameans brought from beyond the river with Zo uh, Shopak, the commander of Hedadezer's army, leading them. When David was told of this, he gathered all Israel and crossed the Jordan. He advanced against them and formed his battle lines op opposite them. David formed his lines to meet the Armians in battle, and they fought against him. But they fled before Israel, and David killed 7,000 of their charioteers and 40,000 of their foot soldiers. He also killed Shopak, the commander of their army. When the vassals of Hedadezer saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they made peace with David and became subject to him. So the Armians 
were not willing to help the Ammonites anymore <clears throat> because David had faith. Once again, he was uh, having his walk with the Lord. He was in strength of, with the Lord. He had faith and courage um, from uh, the Lord. And so, and from the Lord, so he was able to um, defeat the enemies and bring him past the present. Like I mentioned, um, in our lives, give those issues to the Lord, give those problems to the Lord, give the illness to the Lord, those economic problems, the circumstances, the bad circumstances to the Lord, because the Lord is there. He's willing, he's already there and he's already wait. He's just waiting for us. And so, and we can be, at, we can have peace. We can have comfort. We can, uh, have that feeling of love. And not knowing and strengthening, strengthen our faith, strengthen our um, ourselves and in, in the Lord, and uh, and watch the blessings flow, man. Because <laughs> when the blessings start, like you're blessed, and other people are blessed by it. Like I see that all the time. I see that all the time. Amen. Let it be so. Let it be so. Think about those things in our lives. <clears throat> um. So when they say um, when bad things happen, it rains and pours, right? And but also think about that for blessings too. When it, blessings flow in, it pours blessings. Cups overflow us and run over. <laughs> uh, think about those things. Have things like that happen in your life? Have you seen that happen? Um, and um, have you been a witness to something like that? Think about those things in our lives. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Um, let's continue to read. The capture of Rabbah. In the spring, at the time when the kings go off to war, Job led out the armed forces. He laid waste to the land of the Ammonites and went to Rabbah and besieged it. But David remained in Jerusalem. Job attacked Rabbah and left it in ruins. So remember, uh, this is the same story, but um, it's given us additional detail because David remained in Jerusalem, and um, I believe it said that in Kings as well. And so he, Job didn't want to conquer this area because he wanted David to be there, to because David was the leader and David was the king. So he wanted David to um, finish the the battle with this kingdom with this uh kingdom that was at war with israel and so um that was a way to again provide respect to the leader the leader to um, show um, courage to his people um to the people and so um that's why a job didn't finish he didn't he he called david he called on david to come and uh, finish the battle Let's continue reading. <clears throat> David took the crown from the head of their king. Its weight was found to be a talent of gold, and it was set with precious stones, and it was placed on David's head. He took a great quantity of plunder from the city and brought out the people who were there, consigning them to labor with saws and with iron picks and axes. David did this to all the Ammonite towns. Then David and his entire army returned to Jerusalem. And so David was able to rout the enemies and the enemy and then these people um, of Rabbah had to um, basically work for him, work for him and pay tribute to um, because they went up against um, Israel and now, you know, and now they are um, been routed because they they were of a nation that didn't worship the Lord, that didn't follow the Lord, that had rejected the Lord, and now this is their consequence. And David was uh, utilized by the Lord and was able to um, defeat the enemy. And so think about that when we can uh, bring this again to, from past to present. When we do receive that healing when we do receive the advancement in economy when we do receive relief 
in um, whatever it is, whether it be at the job or whatever circumstance we're under, um, take the time and understand and know where that came from. All good things come from above, right? And so think about that in our lives and think about um, times that were relief for you in our lives and how, um, and, and, and it's a good thing we can also look back at it, back, back at those things that you went through a terrible time, you went through a, a hard time, you went through a struggle, and that helps can help us to learn and grow and strengthen our walk with the Lord and and encourage our faith and, and strengthen our faith in the Lord and encourage us and 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 hope. And and so a lot of things, you know, that we go through and we make it out and just is like can be in awe of the Lord and just um and just amazement. I mean, think about where we've gone so far, even in the scripture today, there's just a lot here, um, sermon upon sermons. And so this was also a sign that um, David was, he was already king, but he got this crown, you know. <laughs> and so, you know, sometimes uh, the Lord will give us physical things here on earth. Some, you know, the Lord does, will provide. Um, and it's okay to ask for ask for things here on earth, but remember the Lord's going to provide what He's going to provide for us. Have faith in that, and um, and um, it'll come in His time, uh, and not and not ours, because we always want things. And you also want to avoid making things happen, make trying to make things happen, because you may demand things, you may want things immediately, um, and and you may. Ask the Lord over and over and over again. And the Lord may go ahead and allow you what you want it, but it's not going to be good. It's not going to be uh, the blessing. It's not going to be the, 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 the promise. It's going to be, you know, second best. It's not going to be the best. So it's always good to have patience and allow for the Lord to um, work for us and provide his blessings because once you get it, oh, it's just wonderful. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's above and beyond, right? Think about those things in our life. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel, and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. War with the Philistines. Okay, take note of this section too, because this is going to um, resolve a whole bunch of conflicts that we received in the book of uh, in previous Bible studies of. In, in, in a previous, I believe it was Kings, First Kings. Um, so, and I'll take take note, and I'll uh, get I'll get to that point when we go over it. War with the Philistines. In the course of time, war broke out with the Philistines at Gizar. At that time, Sebekai the Hush Hushethite killed Sepai, one of the descendants of of the Raphites, and the Philistines were sub subjugated. In another battle with the Philistines, Elihanan, son of Jair, killed Lahmi, the brother of Goliath the Gittite, who had a spear with a shaft like a weaver's rod. So remember when we read, you know, we know David and Goliath. David defeated Goliath, and there were other giants, warriors, and stuff, but, so, but they weren't killed the same. You know, David, he went out. He didn't have a, a warrior's thing. He didn't have a he didn't have an a, a, um, uh, an axe, a, a sword, you know, a, a, a ball and chain. You know, he didn't have any of uh, anything a, a, a bow and arrow, anything of weapon, known weapon of war at that time. He had a sling and a sling and some rocks, and he was able to defeat Goliath. He went. He was going up against. The mountain he was going up against, just unmeasurable circumstance. Everything that was going against him went against him, and he had faith. And that's one thing that we can uh, take um, and find encouragement and find strength from, and through even our difficulties and and our challenges. And so that's what David did. He was able to defeat because he had faith in the Lord, and. So now we're getting to know that these other people that also, it said, um, Elihanan killed Goliath. Um, but here we're getting the details. It was actually 
a relative, brother of Goliath. It wasn't Goliath himself, it was the brother of Goliath, because there were other giants as well. And he didn't kill, you know, the same way as David, but killing anything that was just horrible, extremely hard challenge, you know, was an extreme challenge to anyone. It's a huge, a, a huge feat that the Lord provides. And so let's continue to read. In another battle, which took place at Gath, there was a huge man with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, 24 in all. He also was descended from Rapha. When he taunted Israel, Jonathan, son of Shemiah, David's brother, killed him. These were descendants of Rapha and Gath, and they fell at the hands of David and his men. So going against all of this, these uh, these people who, the toughest of odds, the hardest of things, um, and they had faith in the Lord. And that, that faith provided them strength, it provided them the victory. And that's what bringing past to present, that's what we can look forward to is a victory. Because it's already been, it's already been done. It's already been taken. Jesus has already defeated sin. The Lord's already defeated sin. The, Jesus, uh, the Lord's already uh, built a, a place for us. All we have to do is accept it. Accept it. Believe in Jesus and have faith and, and be encouraged. And, and he provided us with a whole book of wisdom for, for each and every one of us to, to, to learn, look at, read, and grow. And I believe this is the living word. This is the living word. Every living word, every time I read this, I get something more and more. It's something that pertains to my life at that moment, every single time. And it's just, it's just wonderful. It's beautiful. It's wonderful um, to have because it shows us the love. You know, think about it. When someone loves another person, they want to teach them. They want to help them. They want to uh, uh, provide them discipline. They want them to grow. They want them to understand. And they want them to experience all of the best things. And so think about that in our lives. There's just quite, just a lot here. And so reading over this, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? All right, let's do a review of, there's a lot here that we went over. And so going all the way back, um, David brings the Ark of the Lord in, um, into Jerusalem, into the city of David with celebration. And everybody is just happy. They're feeling blessed. They're worshiping the Lord and praising the Lord and giving, giving praise back to the Lord. And that's things that we can do too when, when um, in our lives. Think about that. Um, David's uh, psalm of thanks, oh, he just, he just shows the beauty and imagery through words. Um, and like I was mentioning before, um, when I read this, I, I, even myself, I stand in awe, you know, I look at the sky, I look at, I look at the landscape, I look at, um, everything, um, and just see and feel and touch and just, and how things are, the laws and the physics, and how things are created, and how things are move, and just all of it—it's just wondrous and marvelous, and it's and it's perfect. It's what the Lord created, and we get to live in it, and we get to feel it, and touch it, and taste it, and sense it. It's just amazing, and all of those things come to my mind when. Uh, and he and David just does a beautiful job through words and imagery about expressing his love back, uh, his love to the Lord, and his thankfulness and his humbleness to the Lord, and giving glory to the Lord. So much so that God makes a promise to David that they, uh, that David um, the line will be um, over Israel forever, and he fulfills that promise through Jesus who is a descendant of David. And he also tells David a prophecy that goes to each and every one of us. I declare to you that the Lord will build a house for you. And that is for eternity. So we live in, live in time, right? We live in time. We And we choose to acknowledge the Lord. We choose to believe in his son, Lord Jesus Christ. And we get to be with the Lord for eternity in that place that he's built for us for eternity for eternity so this is 
uh, life here may be short, but then and it, we may have, um, you know, downsides. We may have hardships, but we also may have happiness and pleasures here. But when we, it's nothing compared to the happiness um, that we will be with the Lord for eternity. So think about those things. And um, also David's prayer after he heard that from uh, uh, the words of the Lord from, through uh, Nathan the prophet, he was so humble and grateful. And then he proclaimed, let what you have said be done. Let your promises uh, be established. Let your will be done. And that's something that we can also do. We can also say, Lord, I know you have blessing for me. I know you have healing for me. Let your will be done. Let it be done. Let it be done in me. And, and thank him. And thank him with all our heart, all our mind, all our body, all our soul. Thank the Lord and find strength in these words. Um, David's victories, how the Lord was with them everywhere he went. David's officials, um, how it got into, you know, keeping counsel, even with us, uh, how keeping counsel around us. Think about that. Oh, think about counseling your lives. The battle against the Ammonites and how um, the Ammonites um, didn't get good counsel. And so it led to their defeat. Um, the capture of Rabbah and how um, David was David received a crown a new crown, war with the Philistines, and how um, several other people, or a couple other people, um, also defeated giants. Not the same way with David, but they and they weren't Goliath, but they were descendants or relatives and brothers of Goliath. And so, um, or in a rough, rough uh, So think about those things. And reading over this entire Bible study, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when you read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Thank you very much once again for uh, joining me in another Lamp Bible Study. And please continue to pray for me. I will always continue to pray for you. Lamp Bible Studies come out every Tuesdays and Thursdays with highlights throughout the week and flashlights on Fridays. And so I hope and pray that we continue to seek the Lord's wisdom together through His Holy Word. And I pray and hope that these words that uh, you find encouragement and allow the Holy Spirit in, um, to uh, to to give you that hug, right? And <laughs> to give you, for the Lord to give you that hug. And if this is your first time joining us, um, I hope and pray that uh, that we continue to seek the wisdom together and that uh, this has has meaning. And, uh, and just look around, look around and be in awe of what the Lord has, has done. So uh, with all of that, Thank you very much. Wherever you are, have a blessed morning, a blessed day, a blessed afternoon, a blessed evening, a blessed night. God bless.